What's up everybody and welcome to this weekend's edition of 3D Printing News. Normally we come out with it every single Friday at 6 a.m. Arizona time, but we have a special weekend edition. Prusa actually had some major announcements yesterday that I had some time to sleep on and I wanted to go ahead and talk about them here today. So Prusa did have a launch event at their headquarters where they invited a whole bunch of content creators. They showed them a video, they had a full on launch event, and then a lot of the creators actually released videos yesterday which you probably all saw some of the videos but now i'm going to go ahead and give my thoughts on a lot of the items that they actually released or if you're seeing this for the first time we're going to talk about and show you guys the items that were newly launched now let me know if you like more of the chill vibe when it comes to this video the wife and the kid are still sleeping and you know what no one ever prepares you for how tired you are when it comes to having kids. Some of you guys can relate and maybe you're going to tell me that's my life for the next 18 years. Um, which, yeah, it, it probably is now. I thought being 30, I could keep up. <laughs> but man, guys, they, they just truly never, you just, it's never fully explained how tired you are going to be when you have your first child. I don't know. Is the second one any better? Probably not. But some of you guys gave me some feedback and you said more of that upbeat clickbaity type thing. You weren't really into it. So if you like the chill vibe of this or if you kind of like the delivery of my Friday editions, just let me know. I'm not going to get offended. Leave the feedback down in the comments below and your feedback for anything you see here today. Um, so let's go ahead and get into this. So first and foremost, again, they had this launch event. They showed off the Core 1L. This is their next iteration of a 3D printer, their next thing in the Core 1 series. So you have the Core 1, which comes in around $1,300, and you have the Core 1L, which stands for large. It is kind of an interesting naming scheme because when you say L, like loser or loss, that it kind of threw me off and I was like, oh, okay, I mean, it makes sense, but yeah, it, it just kind of threw me off. Um, but you have the Core 1L, it's actually shipping on November 7th, so you can pre-order it now. $1,800 plus shipping, so it includes tariffs and all of that. Prusa recently started doing this because I think they were a little worried probably about some of the overcharges maybe even that were happening on some of the tariff companies or the shipping companies that were, they were doing. You saw some nightmares where some of the stuff was just absolutely insane. Um, but they're making improvements on pretty much everything over the core one. It's a larger form factor. However, they're still keeping it very compact so it doesn't take up too much space. Something like the H2S is going to be much larger probably when it comes to like what you're looking at. Now that build plate is bigger when it comes to the H2S, but the form factor and everything of the Core 1L is going to be, again, a lot more compact. It's more for a manufacturing space. You're maximizing the space that you can use in your manufacturing plant. Of course, they always do the no walled garden or vendor locks, the little stuff and the little jabs at Bamboo Lab. And when it comes to other things, they're designed for offline use first, basically. You know, you don't have a reliability on the cloud. The, you know, they're the main competitor to Bamboo Lab, I would say, and they're probably the I would go out to venture, they're probably the second biggest 3D print company right now in the space. So they know what they're new, doing guys, even though they're charging a lot for the 3D printers, they do know what they're doing. They're a very large company. Um, and you kind of have to give some respects to Mr. Prusa and what he's built there, trying to be non-China dependent, you know, where, yeah, you guys know. So they have convection heating. Again, they have a little wiper that goes back and forth on the top to actually open and let in air for like PLA. Um, you know, it, there's just a lot, again, there's just a lot of upgrades when it comes to the Core One XL. Now they do tout about 200% increase in build volume with the build plate being 300 by 300 by 330. That's my main complaint when it comes to the Core One. Um, you get the Prusa customer service. There's someone there always 24 seven. That's why you pay the prices you do when it comes to Prusa, when they're doing like that online first, um, they're really touting security. So if you're working on some sort of NDA project and you have to be completely offline, you can't have it upload to the cloud because then maybe someone steals it or whatever it may be, you want maximum security. When it comes to your 3D printer, Again, it's designed for offline first, and some companies are not even allowed to use products for China. Now, that might be controversial or whatever it is. That's the way it is in this world right now when it comes to that. 
Um, and, and again, I'm starting to understand more and more why people pay for the Prusa printers. Again, it's the customer service, the offline first, the maximum security stuff you need, because if you're buying a maximum security printer from like Bamboo Lab, for example, they charge like a, a ridiculous amount more. Let's go ahead and just look up. I think it was the H2D Pro um, version. Let's go ahead and look at that real quick. Yeah, the H2D Pro is available right now on Matter Hackers for $38 hundred dollars and then it's also available on bamboo lab where you have to find a reseller so yeah they're, they're just charging an absurd amount more to develop that infrastructure so again if it's i i'm starting to understand more it's manufacturers they have the money to put out for these they need completely like tear down all these parts are available they have to take out the camera there's a lot more customizational customizable aspects and I'm starting to understand again more why it's the way it is and it's priced the way it is. However, I will say for a normal 3D print consumer, you're just trying to print some stuff in PLA, you're downloading all your files offline already. It, it, it is hard to justify, but again, I don't think that then you're the core audience that Prusa is going for. However, they did offer some other stuff that you may be interested in. So I just want to give my thoughts on like why I think it's priced high. And I'm, again, I'm starting to understand more how that works, but they have the open print RFID tag, which is the interesting thing here. Essentially right now, right? Bamboo Lab is only available to Bamboo Lab. You have, what's another company? Like I know, I think it was Flash Forge or one of them is has RFID tags in theirs, but they're only like suitable for that manufacturer. Elgu actually had an open source RFID. They were asking for feedback. We haven't actually seen that yet, but Prusa is actually launching one and they're trying to work with 3D print companies to develop this as like the standard. Now, I think this is a large ask and I, I don't personally think it'll be developed as the standard over time. I like what they're doing. I understand why they're doing it, but it all comes down to one thing and that's control. So when it comes to Snapmaker, when it comes to Bamboo Lab, I don't think Bamboo Lab will budge at all because they have no reason to. Um, but there's just like a lot, I guess I won't say they have no reason to, right? Their customers would like an open source RFID. But you guys know what I'm saying. Like it's not going to impact their business really, I don't think, if they do it one way or the other. So why would they, right? If they want you to push towards buying their filaments and buying their stuff, just kind of, you know, gives them a little bit of a leg up to say, hey, buy our stuff if you have our printers because it's a lot easier to use um, in, in that in that aspect or that front of it. But right, they, they, they tout a lot of things like locked proprietary ecosystems where you can only use them with one third party machines, forcing systems, forcing users into a closed ecosystem if you want to use the RFID tech, right? There's no lockdowns, I don't think, of any 3D print manufacturer when it comes to FDM printing. Um, that have actually said you can only use this filament. The ones that did, they're out of business. Cloud dependency, right? You have to use the cloud for your RFID. They're trying to say you don't need that. You can scan it from your phone when it comes to this Prusa open print tag and then fully like customize it from your phone, change the settings in the RFID tag. It's a pretty cool system when it comes to this. And I guess I should have explained RFID tag meaning like, okay, you put filament, um, if you're, you're someone new watching this and you don't know what RFID is, essentially it's just like this little tag that you it scans and it tells your printer exactly what filament's on there. So they're trying to make it too so you can inventory your stuff for manufacturers easier. Maybe you have a big pallet of stuff, you scan it and okay, now I know all the filament I have, the inventory of filament I have. Um, they're saying they're reusable. There's a lot of stuff again here to like, but I just think control, it comes down to one thing, control, money, um, do 3D print manufacturers actually adopt this because, uh, and I mean the filament manufacturers, they did say some filament manufacturers are starting to implement this, but they want to pick the winner. And if there's no point in actually picking someone because no one's going to win in this process, they might see that and they say, okay, like we're not, we're not putting this out. So what do you guys think? Do you think companies will actually start adopting this as the open standard? I just have a hard time believing that they're actually they're actually going to do it. And I, I wish like, right, there was open source everything. It would make things a lot easier, but when it comes to business corporations and wanting to use their own items, lock people in, 
or say, hey, look, if you wanna do this, you have to buy our filament. I think that's the route that we're going to keep going. And unfortunately, I don't think anyone's going to fully adopt this as cool as it is, as much as I would want them to. I, I, I just personally don't see it happening. Um, but if it does, again, I'll be, I'll be happy, I'll be satisfied, but it's not a big deal to me to enter what uh, filament I have on my printer. Like I've never stopped and said, oh, I wish this did this. It would be nice, but I don't know. That's me personally. What do you guys think on the RFID open tag system? Um, also, so this is the coolest thing I think that launched. We have the original Prusa XL silicone printing tool head. Now it is pricey. It's coming in at $1,000 and the Prusa XL is already pricey, right? If you want to purchase things for it or buy a Prusa XL. However, when you look at silicone printing tool heads, there is nothing like this available in the market. And I was seeing people say that the only option is actually tens of thousand dollars, tens of thousands of dollars more than what the Prusa, Prusa XL is actually going to be. So when you put it that way, this is the first thing where I'm like, okay, this is pretty innovative by Prusa, right? They showed printing in like silicone, they had some image here where it's like stretching. Uh, th there's just a lot of stuff that is, again, like to me, this is what I would be most excited to see. And if I ever had the money, get my hands on and actually use, that's something that this is like innovative to me. So when it comes to all of this, the liquid printing, that's the same thing they do with like chocolate. Like it's like, I think this is just one step closer to it's like, you're just gonna get this at home, full on manufacturing machine where you can manufacture anything in your garage that is able to be in a 3D printed like scenario. So this to me, I'm most excited to see how a lot of this works. Again, it's not coming till I believe January or Q1 of 2026. So what do you guys think of all of these releases? I probably missed some stuff. Again, it's early in the morning, I'm tired. Uh, yeah, I just want to talk about some of this stuff and give my thoughts again. Um, but with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy your weekend or whatever day you're watching this on. But before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and comment down below what you would like to see next.